It turns out that refactoring doesn't just have to be for our code. We can also refactor our tests as well. And so I want to look at our tests that we've written so far here and look at this line right here, user.create, and we pass this information. And this works, and it, it's correct. But it turns out that if we want to change what uh, validations we uh, require of our users, we're going to have to look for all of our methods that create those users and make sure that they follow this pattern. And we've already got it in two places. We've only got two files, this user pages spec and the, the user spec that tests the model explicitly. If we were to grow our testing framework, uh, almost every test is going to require creating a user. And so one common thing that test-driven development does is um, create something that are called fixtures, or ways to create known good quantities that are passing all, all the tests that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a gem to help us do that. So I'm going to go ahead and edit our gem file here. And we're only doing this for tests so I'm going to include it in the test and our gem is called factory girl and we're going to include all the nice things about the rails extensions that factory girls no, factory girl knows about and so now we need to bundle install so that we make sure that we have the latest and greatest version uh, of factory girls in here and so now we can see we've got factory girl and factory girl rails and what we can do now is we're going to create a file that stores the known good information and that file is in our spec directory and it's called factories.rb and the syntax of this is that we're going to say factory girl dot define and in here, we will just list all the different factories and factory girl parlance or uh, fixtures that we want to create. So the first factory that we want to create uh, is for users. So whenever we want to create a user, we're going to follow this pattern right here. And the, the pattern is that we're going to have a name, an email, and a password. And the password is real easy. Uh, let's just put a space in there. We're just going to hard code the password to be that. Now, the email would be really cool if we, well, for a particular user, if we could do John Doe, then our email would be, you know, John Doe at example.com. But this has the same problem as we had earlier. This is a fixed name and a fixed email, and if we want to create multiple users, they're all going to have the same name and email, and so they're going to break our validations. And the whole point of having this factory was to make things that uh, validated correctly. So Factory Girl allows us to say, hey, we need to know uh, specifically when we create a new one of, of these instances. So what we're going to do here is we do sequence, and so for the name attribute, we have a sequence. And so let's do this a little bit differently. We're going to get the number, and let's just put it in I, and then we can just call this user I. So whenever a new user is created, it will give us a different value, a different sequence number for, for I. And so we'll get a new user name because we have user and then the value of I. And we can do something similar for the email. And we will get that sequence number as well. And we will do something like oops, user dot. And that's not going to work because we have single. Now we have a factory named user and when that user factory is created it's going to try to create a user model 
because their names are the same. Turns out that will work quite well. We have a sequence for our name, sequence for our email, and a fixed password. So now we have a factory that we can call on. And if we ever change our validation rules, we only have to change it here if, if we make something more strict, like we say that all email have to come from a particular domain, or that our, our passwords have to have at least one numeric character in it. That would be real easy to fix here. It'd be uh, pretty complicated the more and more tests that you grow that depend upon this. So let's go back into our tests and instead of doing user.create let's go ahead and use our factory. So we do factory girl dot create and we need to tell which factory to do. So it would be user. If we wanted to make a custom element, let's say, well now here would be a bad idea, but we could do something like I want to have a special password. We can override uh, the built-in factory value for password with this and that can be true of the name, the email, or, or any other attribute. Here we don't care so now we can go like this and this is short enough I'm gonna actually do this make it a little bit more concise so now instead of calling user.create we, we ask our, our factory to create that, that user following that, that same specification let's go ahead and check our, our other one as well and those are up at the, the top right here where we create our, our user and now we can instead of passing all these special values in we just know that we want our, our standard old user so let's go ahead and factory girl we just want a standard old user and that becomes a lot more readable and then of course we're going to run our tests to make sure that they still pass oh, and run them rather than install things because we want to make sure that we didn't break things by using our factory girls rather than explicitly instantiating our user object and we see that it works properly so now we've refactored a test and the functionality still works.